Oh, good morning guys. It's another fresh week here and I started this video off with sunshine and blue skies and all those other things when I first walked you guys around this car. Now it is a rainy morning. Hopefully the clouds will move out of the way and we'll get some more sunshine. So if you guys remember last week, I was trying to start the car and the battery didn't have enough juice so I had it on the charger and I came out yesterday and the car was rolling over but it wouldn't fire and uh, I immediately thought okay what did I accidentally cut when I took out the nitrous uh, system that was in the car and then there was one wire that um, uh, went to the MSD uh, 6 plus ignition system that was essentially for the coil so I hooked that back up and the car would fire and then it would die almost immediately and I was like racking my brain like what's going on is there something else in this ignition system checking all the wiring I'm not gonna lie guys I probably spent 45 minutes racking my brain over this um, and it actually ended up being the silliest thing it's the ignition so I'm gonna see if I can replicate the problem so I can share it with you guys All right, so we're in the car right now. You're gonna see when I turn the ignition forward. And if you see the key, how far forward it is, and how, you can see how sensitive the relays and the fuel pump is in the run position. So the problem was literally this ignition, guys. Um, there's clearly a contact in there that isn't good. Uh, so gonna have to investigate and find out what that is, but if you jiggle it, it will stay in its proper position and I can get the car to fire. All right, we got ourselves a rat's nest here, folks. I was uh, finishing taking out the rest of the uh, nitrous kit and system and it had the uh, switch on the B&M handle. Uh, took out the MSD uh, shift light because that's really not gonna be of use. Um, Put a stock handle back on so that looks clean ashtray door actually closes now because it was full of uh, like an arming switch plate and all that other good stuff so we're back here and i was i pulled out the ignition uh real quick and then noticed of course this common issue of the switch that um doesn't want to stay uh in position i think there might have been a recall on these way back in the day uh, but regardless, for now, one way to fix this, guys, believe it or not, because it does sit in place, but it will knock itself loose again. That's the problem. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tie wrap it on. I'm going to put a tie wrap in the front, tie wrap in the back. That'll hold this main connector on, and that'll actually uh, make sure the car um, can run and move around. And believe it or not, this is a pretty sturdy fix. You can actually hear the fuel pump and everything engaged there. Just the sound we're looking for. So we're back in the car. I got the ignition all buttoned up here. And um, as you can see, when I turn the key, everything seems to be good. So now I can finally give you guys that startup video that I was trying to do the other day. So I'll get the camera set up here and uh, we'll get this thing fired up so you can hear it.
So success, got the ignition problem sorted out, got a whole bunch of wiring cleaned up, got the nitrous off, uh, car's looking pretty good. Need to get rid of these racing seats. Uh, they're just not doing it for me whatsoever. Uh, the interior in the car is super clean. Uh, I got some nice floor mats in there, so uh, the carpet doesn't get dirty like it is right now. Ashtray door closes nice and um, just looks better without the T-handle, the shift light, all those other things. So um, it's a solid car, guys. Now the big question is, I've actually been getting a lot of interest for this car and I haven't even really said what I'm going to do with it yet. So I don't know what direction I want to go. Uh, originally I was thinking I was going to take the motor and transmission and put it in lemon dropped. Uh, you know, it's a solid drivetrain. You've seen what it looks like underneath the hood. This thing is super, super clean. Uh, makes really good power. Uh, I found the dyno sheet the other day, so without the nitrous it was making uh, about 352 to the wheels. And uh, with a 125 shot, it was making 399 to the wheels. So uh, again, there's only 1,500 miles on this motor, if that, since it was built. So there's a lot of life left, needless to say. So I was thinking about keeping the drivetrain using the yellow car. I was thinking about maybe even taking the motor that was in the yellow car, the Clean 93 uh, engine, and putting it in here and making this more of a stock, nice little driver for, uh, for myself or for somebody else. Uh, with all the interests I've got, um, I don't know if this car is going to stick around. Um, I'd like to build it, but you know, money talks. So. so you guys tell me, what do you guys think I should do with this car? Should I use the drivetrain for the yellow car? Should I put a paint job on this car? Because the paint is the only thing that's holding it back. The underside of this car is super clean. It's painted black. It's rust free, uh, really good foundation. Um, it could become a roller. Somebody was inquiring because they wanted to do a coyote swap to a coupe. Um, or like I said, um, put it more back to a stock and, and just turn it into a driver. I'm interested to hear what you guys think I should do with this car. Uh, it's really nice to start getting some of the bugs worked out of it as the car has been sitting for five years. Like the fuel is old, um, it has been sitting. So the car really needs a good drive and uh, probably now with no nitrous, get a proper tune uh, just for all motor. Uh, but other than that guys, this is the 1988 uh, little coupe that could. Uh, so let's see what happens.